Grace and peace to you this Sabbath day, this third Sunday in January, uh, and the first Sunday of a second Sunday of Epiphany. We celebrated the Lord's baptism last week, and we welcome all of you here in the sanctuary this morning. Those of you who are joining us on Facebook Live, we welcome you and invite you to send us a message in the chat room so that we can. Uh, Register your attendance along with everyone else. There are several announcements or some announcements in the schedule on the back of your bulletin. Uh, and please pay attention to the newsletter articles that we share with you each week. I thank Paula for her diligent work there. On the 29th, which is two weeks from today, we will sing and celebrate the music of our heritage and uh, of singing our songs of faith and following that worship service. We're going to invite you to bring something to share with everybody else. We're going to have lunch here in the in the fellowship hall. So please make a note of that um, in your uh, computer and or your calendars. And we welcome all of you to do that and be part of, of our fellowship time together on the 29th of uh, January. We welcome you and we invite you to focus your attention on the music that's about to be played by Debbie and then we'll begin with a call to worship. Some of you may not have a bulletin. Uh, I don't know if we had a bulletin bur burglar this morning, but I've been in the back room with Bo Lacey and we've been a printing bulletin, so bear with us. And if you need one in a few moments as the ushers move about to give you uh, a registration pads, uh, we'll, we'll make sure that you have a bulletin. But now let us focus our hearts and minds as we prepare ourselves for worship. Will you please join me in our call to worship? To the church in Tupelo, St. Luke, located at 1400 Clayton Avenue, to make a difference to those sanctified in Christ Jesus, saved to serve humbly and dependably, to those called to be holy, serving as witnesses of God's transforming grace. Let us raise our voices, unashamedly rivaling heaven's angels, to praise our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Let every, every voice to our Master and Maker. Our hymn of praise this morning is hymn number 568, Christ for the World We Sing. Shall we praise God together? for the world we sing the world to Christ we bring with loving zeal the poor and them that mourn the faint and overborn sin sick and sorrow worn whom Christ doth heal 
let us affirm our faith together with the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence she shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. down for the children's moments as our ushers pass out attendance registration pads. Is that Hannah Schimper? That's Kenley. That's not Hannah Schimper, but that's her daughter. <laughs> Welcome. Good morning. It's been a while. I haven't been up here with you guys in a while, have I? No, it's been a busy couple months, hasn't it? Yeah. Okay, so I want to talk to you about something. Who likes books? Who likes books? Okay, so what are your, some of your favorite books? Harry Potter, that's a good one. Babysitter's, Babysitter's Club. Sisters. What books do you guys like? I Survived. I survived. You like Pete the Cat, don't you? Yeah? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so joys of books, right? Where do books take us? They take us anywhere, right? And we get to meet anyone we want, right? We get to meet imaginary creatures. We get to go on adventures, maybe ride in a boat or an airplane. Or you a find, flying car. Or a flying car, you're right. You sail the seas or become an astronaut and travel to space. So reading enriches your lives with new words and ideas. So pay close attention to this word, enrich. Who knows what enrich means? Anybody? makes it better yeah so to enrich something means to make it richer or to make it better so pastor rob's going to talk about the apostle paul and apostle paul speaks about this word in the bible he gives thanks to god for christians living in corinth because in everything they were enriched by jesus in all speech and all knowledge so we learn that christ jesus enriches lives he makes our lives better as christians we learn new ways of living that help us every day so books enrich us, and do you know what other book enriches us? Maybe Harry Potter, maybe Babysitter's Club, but the Bible. So this is the Bible we got, Lucas, and it's an action Bible, and it has it in comic books. So it's the story of the Bible in a comic book. And so you get to see all the creatures and all the people and kind of what it looked like back then. Pretty cool, huh? Yeah, so this week, I want you to think about ways that Jesus enriches your lives and how you guys can enrich other people's lives. Can you do that for me? Okay, let's pray. God, I thank you for today. I thank you for these kids. Um, I thank you for the Bible and all of the books that you give us to help us enrich our lives. I pray that you continue to enrich these children's lives as they grow. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. To their seats, you are invited to stand and greet one another with the love of Christ. Wait, it's the wrong song. <laughs> like the tag goes up. Hey! Yeah. He does.
Let's continue to stand and sing our song of praise this morning. How firm a foundation, you saints of the Lord, is laid on your faith in his excellent word. What more can he say than to you he has said? Oh, you who for refuge to Jesus have fled. Fear not, he is with us, so oh, be not dismayed. For he is our God, our sustainer and strength. He'll be our defender and cause us to stand. Upheld by his merciful almighty hand. How firm our foundation, how sure our salvation, and we will not be shaken, Jesus' firm foundation. The soul that is trusting in Jesus as Lord, We'll press on enduring the darkest of storms. And though even hell should endeavor to shake, He'll never, no, never, no, never forsake. He'll never, no, never, no, never forsake. How firm our foundation, how sure. not trying to be cute, but those of us who are have some gray hair in memory, Peter, Paul, and Mary doing praise music. That's a compliment, y'all. That's a compliment. Thank you for your leadership each week. Now as we move into our time of prayer, we're given the opportunity to gather here as the church as the body of Christ. And when we do, we can offer up to God whatever weighs heavy on our hearts, the things that bring us joy, and we can know that God hears us. In our time of prayer this morning, we're going to have a moment of silent prayer. I'm going to pray for us, and together we will pray the Lord's Prayer. Will you pray with me? Spirit of promise, spirit of unity, we thank you that you are also the spirit of renewal. 
And God, we come here today seeking you, seeking to be renewed, refreshed, and restored. We thank you for drawing us to this place and time and for interrupting us with your gift of life in Christ. Whether we have heard the news many times over or are this day listening with brand new ears, surprise us with your justice and righteousness that our lives might turn to the right direction. God, startle us with your goodness and your mercy that we might receive your empowering forgiveness, transforming us with your love and your grace. God, this MLK weekend, we are grateful for those whose lives inspire our own. We pray that we may be more like them. Make us yearn for true greatness in our midst, for those who actually serve your kingdom with all their hearts and their might. Let the Spirit of Christ be in us all to teach us truth and not error, love and not hate. God of steadfast love, you raise us up when we fall and place our feet on steady ground. Strengthened by your faithfulness, we offer our prayers and thanksgiving for the grace that is ours in Christ. We pray for the mission of your church that we may proclaim the good news as we put our trust in you. We pray for the world, that as your saving love may reach to the ends of the earth as we serve the common good. We pray for all who suffer, that we may hear their cry as we share in your steadfast mercy. We pray for your creation, that we may safeguard its well-being as we labor together. We pray for all those we want to lift up to you today, at this time saying their names aloud. Keith Adner, Bruce Burke, Sandra Adner, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And now let us pray together the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. Now let us continue in worship with the giving of God's tithes and our offerings.
setting up this sermon. Y'all might want to go home, but please stay. Thank you, Hannah, for your teaching and leadership. Thank you. This was last Sunday's sermon. It didn't get put away. I need to do that right now. Would you give your attention to the Apostle Paul's letter to the church in Corinth? That's not up North Highway 45. It's in Asia Minor. Bear with me, I'm getting there. Paul, called to be an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God and our brother Sosthenes, to the church of God that is in Corinth, to those who are sanctified in Christ Jesus, called to be saints, together with all those who are in every place on the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, both their Lord and ours. Grace to you and peace from our God, our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ. I give thanks to my God always for you because of the grace of God that has been given you in Christ Jesus. For in every way you have been enriched in him, in speech and knowledge of every kind, just as the testimony of Christ has been strengthened amongst you so that you are not lacking in any spiritual gift as you wait for the revealing of our Lord Jesus Christ. He will also strengthen you to the end, so that you may be blameless on the day our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful. By him you were called into the fellowship of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. I don't know about you, but one of the most disappointing two-word statements I can think of is, if only. How many times in your life have you wasted letting those words divulge you of moving forward? If only I'd done better in school. If only I hadn't taken that risk or not taken that risk, I might be better off today. What kind of church and nation would we have become if only we had learned more from the witness of Dr. Martin Luther King, whose life we honor tomorrow? 
Is it possible that we have forgotten who we are and what we've been given? Just last week, we stood here at the altar of this church and remembered our baptism. And if we're honest at times, we don't think we have much to offer. Or even worse, that we're not worthy. Ironically, the text I just read provides a very different scenario. Once you get past Paul's classic introduction, and we'll get back to that in a minute, First Church Corinth had a very different issue other than the if-only syndrome. They had people who believed that they were more special than everybody else because they had received the gift of speaking in tongues. They acted as if they were more important and in the church community that they should be calling the shots. No one else who did not possess that gift was good enough or had enough leadership or they were unqualified. These folks had the answers, y'all. Sadly, I've experienced that in my 37 years. I've been in a congregation where there were folk in the church who possessed those gifts, and they exactly looked down their nose at the rest of us. It was three miserable years, quite frankly. It even happened when I was a young student in college. I went to college in Shreveport at Centenary College on a in a pre-seminary track for kids who were interested in some sort, form of ministry. At the very beginning of the, of the four years, we had this big retreat, and all of us students got to know each other. And there was this young college student. She, she herself had possessed this gift, and we'd been talking about it that weekend. And she just looked at me point blank in the face, and she said, if you would have this gift, it will make your ministry a whole lot better. She even tried to lay hands on me and pray for me to receive the gift. I'm not denigrating that gift any whatsoever. But y'all, it didn't take. <laughs> I don't have that gift. See, the church has always had issues. It started in the first century with Paul. Corinth had its own set of issues and Paul addresses the Corinthians beginning with his own credentials. Listen to this. An apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God. It doesn't get much better than that, y'all. These folk were acting as if they were first graders telling their teacher after one day of school, I know all I need to know. So Paul gets down to the nitty-gritty. He reminds them that they were to be saints, that they had been enriched to be saints. But Paul's description of a saint was not someone who thinks better of themselves, although in our culture we refer to the apostles as saints. We, re we have days when we remember people who've gone on before us. We call it All Saints Day. Paul believed that the word saint meant someone who recognized the need for a savior. Imagine that. That someone recognized the need for a savior. A saint was one who believed that he or she was beholden to God. We don't hear that word much anymore. Beholden. Beholden means that one belongs to Christ wrapped up in Christ. And when this happens, we become the vessel that God works through in Christ. God is the one who pours or shines through our lives. And when this happens, we don't have to take credit for it or to act more pious than necessary. And if God is at the center of all that we do, then there's no room to feel any level of superiority as Christians and followers of Jesus. 
there's something else in the text that Paul addresses as well. The church of Jesus Christ was bigger than any one of its local communities. Remember, Paul's mission was to go into all the world. He established churches all over Asia Minor. And those letters that we have in the New Testament, Colossians and Galatians and Philippians, those were the names of congregations in cities in Asia Minor where he preached and organized and developed the church of Jesus Christ. They were not an island unto themselves. They were part of a law larger issue. But the problem in Corinth, and it's still a problem today, is that these Christians there in Corinth remade Jesus in their own image. They looked down in the bottom of the well and they saw their face instead of the face of Christ. In the past 50 years in our culture here in the United States, civil religion has infiltrated the sanctuaries and places of worship and in the minds of preachers and leaders who want to teach that patriotism equals Christianity. If you don't believe me, drive over to Oxford and there is a church sign out in front of a church with an American flag with a Bible in the middle of it. Now, I love the national anthem. I love to sing the national anthem. I enjoy singing the national anthem at sporting events over in Oxford and other places. And oftentimes when I'm there in the, in the crowd, I will harmonize with whomever's singing. But I love it the best when everybody in the stadium is singing. It is moving. I love it. But it doesn't have the same impact when we are in this place and we are singing how great thou art and amazing grace. Paul wanted these Christians and believers in Corinth to know that they were a part of God's church, not some select club who was be better than you because I could speak in tongues and you can't. This was the church of Jesus Christ who is the cornerstone of all that was and is and ever will be. Today we're challenged to remember that God's church is bigger than what we often think. We talk about the United Methodist Church. We're just one part of the pie. God's church is a vision for the kingdom to be reality on earth as it is in heaven. We prayed that a few minutes ago lest you forget. We need not step away and think that the task is too large. We can get caught up on in the if onlys. Well, if we only had a few more young people, um, if only people hadn't left. I've heard that for the last two years, y'all. If only. Folks, we are the saints of God, baptized given the power of the Holy Spirit in our lives. We're part of something much larger than we seldom think about. St. Luke, we the people who gather here on, at 1400 Clayton Avenue are the people of, that God depends on to be faithful. He's given us all we need. Yes, an aged congregation, but that's not an excuse to limit the power of God when we gather for worship or Bible study or we meet at the food pantry and we serve the community or we, someone comes and meets with our children or young people. We are the church of Jesus Christ, baptized and spirit-filled. Lift up your hearts this morning, folk, and roll up your sleeves. And join in seeking where we can meet Jesus in this community and join others to be the people of God. This is God's church and God has entrusted it to us for a reason. I have another two word expression. Differently from if only. With Christ. With Christ. We're not the biggest community of faith in town. We may not have all the bells and whistles other congregations tout. But God is calling us to be us. 
He's calling St. Luke to live into our future with confidence and hope that when we come together, we seek the face of Jesus and God will be faithful. If you need an illustration of what I'm talking about this morning, just cast your eyes up here on these folk right here. When we started back after the pandemic, we had a remnant of a choir, but we still had a young whippersnapper who was our choir director who had this crazy idea that we could fill this choir loft if we just prayed about it and we went out and quietly began to invite people to consider singing. Look up there. Yeah, there are some faces who've been there a while. But there's some new faces. And did you notice Jeremy standing by me? He's up back up in the, in the sound booth. But he has a beautiful tenor voice. You see, with good leadership and with Christ, we sang the hallelujah chorus. Amen. Amen. Matt never said, if only. With Christ, with Christ, the sure foundation, on Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand. Some of you know who Mary Ann Williamson is. She wrote a book about miracles. I like some of her writing, and I like this quote, and I want to leave it with you because I want you to take it personally. You are a child of God. You were born to make manifest the glory of God within you. It's not just some of us. It is every one of us. And as we let our own light shine, we unconsciously give permission for other people to do the same. Friends, with Christ, with Christ, not if only, with Christ, let your light shine today for the whole world to see. Because with Christ, we've been given all we need. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, let us pray. Lord, I'm so tired of whiny, wondering what the future holds. I'm tired of me thinking about it. I'm tired of me saying about it. Remind us here today that you have enriched us by your, pe your presence, your power, and your purpose for our lives and for this congregation. Lord, lift our eyes forward. And let your light shine through and in of us so that we will not give up hope, but that we will be your faithful remnant. We will be the people who gather here on 1400 Clayton Avenue, and we will trust you and we will follow you. In the power of the Holy Spirit, amen. We're not going to sing I know whom I have believed. It's a great hymn. But we're going to sing, Shine, Jesus, Shine. It's a praise song. You may not know it. It's an oldie. It's a goodie. But I asked that we change it so that we may continue this imagery of allowing God's light to shine in us. As we're singing, if you've been stirred and you feel some conviction and you need to lay some burdens down so you can be more enriched in your life today, you just feel free to come down here and pray. No, it doesn't matter what anybody thinks. It's between you and God. If you're at home watching, let your den or coffee table or whatever be your altar and continue worshiping with us. Let us stand and praise God. Lord, the light of your love is shining in the midst of the dark.
on your kingly brightness so our faces display your likeness ever changing from glory to glory mirrored here in our lives tell your story shine on me shine on me shine Shine, Jesus, shine. 